Hey guys, it's Stephanie here from Pantry Living. It is funny, I realize that probably throughout this whole month so far, I have not introduced myself once. So there you go, I'm Stephanie and this is Pantry Living. <laughs> so we are on the 25th of August. The final stretch is coming and I really would like to go strong. I do feel the last couple days have been a little lackluster, I guess you could say, because I haven't had a lot of jars produced. We've done a lot of drying a lot of freezing, a lot of that sort of stuff, but not so much in the jar production, which really makes me feel, mm, I've got results, right? So we're starting off today a little bit boring. We're going into making some August stew again. Once again, I am not going to bore you with all the details. This is my final batch of August stew and I'm so excited to have it finally done. This will be 58 jars, provided I get the full 18 out of this one. It would have been more except for I opened a couple by accident because I had so much stuff on the table, which I've since had to empty because the table couldn't hold the weight. But I will make sure I lay it all out at the end so that you guys can see and then we'll figure out how we get it all into the pantry, right? So we're going to get this August stew made and then I've got some other plans for the rest of these three days and I also want to use my new juicer again because I was so pleased with that jelly and how it turned out. Definitely need to tweak a little bit on the syrup because it didn't really turn out syrupy but hopefully on the next round it'll work out great. So stay tuned as we go through some more Pomona's pectin stuff and obviously this August stew. So let's get the August stew done so we can get on to the fun stuff. Well guys, it's the 26th of the month and I'm taking a moment to sit down. It is hot. The last few days have been quite warm, quite muggy, and there's still stuff that has to get done around the farm. Now I made that August stew yesterday. I was lucky. I was up early enough in the morning to just get it done before it got hot. Well today, it's just not happening. There is no canning going on, but the one thing that I think we can work on today before it gets too crazy to be outside is picking some herbs because as you can see here, my drying rack is completely empty. I have been slacking on the herbs for probably a week now. I've just been focused on fruit and other things and I just haven't had a chance to run out and grab stuff. So right now, I'm gonna slide to the side. I am sitting, yeah, I'm sitting because We've been weed whacking and pulling garden and all that sort of stuff, so it's been hot. But behind me here is my patch of lemon balm, or I should say one of my patches of lemon balm. You saw the one earlier in Every Bit Counts that was over in our food thicket. This is just nicely situated right outside the porch in the shade right now. Also here is our oregano or some of our oregano. So I think that's what we're gonna work on harvesting is both of those and probably some more mint because that is something that's essential. And then we're gonna come back in the next video probably and tackle some stevia again because that is something that's so important and again i just haven't been getting as much put away as i would like and i'd really like to get some good results on those jars for the end of this challenge for you guys so here we go we're gonna pick lemon balm and oregano and then we'll see where we're at it smells so good mm, so fresh I love this one for in the winter mixed into our teas. It is so good for you. And we're lucky enough to have a lot of it around the homestead. And hidden down in here amongst our blueberry patch is our oregano. We've got quite a few clumps of it here and I really have slacked on harvesting it this year. So we're gonna take quite a bit. Uh, one thing I'm also noticing, even though there's not much left, we really need to harvest the last of the blueberries too. So I'm gonna get James out here to work on that while I get going on harvesting some of this oregano and then we'll see where we're at because it is feeling awfully hot. It may not be much as you can see but every bit counts. Well it's been a hot day these kids have been out working hard and now it's time to get all of those leaves off the vines are the vines stems I guess stalks and into the drying rack. All right guys, so we've made that August stew already in this video. It's actually behind me still sitting on my stove because we have been busy, busy. We have put some herbs away in that heat. It was crazy hot today, but it's all right. We got some into the dryer. I'd like to still pick that mint tomorrow. So hopefully I can get to that, but at least that stuff that's in the drying rack should be ready to move over to the actual dehydrators. If it isn't, I still have space, so not to worry, but for this evening, I'm going to start prep for my next thing, which is happening tomorrow. I have removed two bags 
each containing nine cups of raspberries. I had set these aside to make raspberry syrup. I was thinking I would use my old recipe, but I was so pleased with that blackberry syrup that I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna put them overnight into my uh, steam juicer here. Hopefully they will be defrosted by morning and I can juice them. And then we're going to make some more raspberry syrup this time with the Pomona's pectin. So fingers crossed, I will like it just as much as the other. I am on the fence about putting as much Pomona's pectin in. I think I'm gonna go with a little bit less cause I didn't like it so jellified. One thing we really like to use the raspberry syrup for is drinks. I mix it into lemonade to make a pink lemonade or on top of ice cream or anything like that. So definitely less sugar will be wonderful, but I don't want it to be jellified if that makes any sense. So fingers crossed we can achieve that tomorrow. This was a double batch of my other, which would have given us six pint jars. So I'm curious to see what we get if we do it this way. Anyways, stay tuned in this video because tomorrow morning, that's what we're gonna be up to. Well guys, that drying rack was not full. We still had a few empty containers and I decided I'm gonna keep going. And I went out and harvested this. Look at all this chocolate mint. I really want to thin down the patches anyways out there. So this is perfect. This is definitely going to fill the rest of the racks on there, which is awesome because as I've mentioned before, we love teas and things like that all winter long. And this is a great, great addition to have in the herbal pantry, which I still have to organize. So that will be coming in a video because I have no idea where it stands right now. We are back and we are ready to make our raspberry syrup. I'm super excited about this. As you saw in our last video, the blackberry syrup ended up a little bit thick for my liking. So we're gonna do a bit of experimenting today. No, I didn't go ahead and watch a bunch of instructional YouTube videos. I figured we're just gonna give it a wing and see what happens. But one thing I must say is with the same amount of fruit, look at all the juice I got, three full liters. And the interesting thing is my usual recipe for raspberry syrup that I would have made before I discovered being pre-diabetic, uh, that would have been, um, this, this liquid would have been from two batches. So I did the same as what I did with the blackberries. It was 18 cups of fruit. And my old recipe was nine cups of fruit, six cups of sugar and lemon juice and all the other, and don't get me wrong, mm, it was delicious. And if it weren't for the fact that I was trying to watch how much sugar I was consuming, I wouldn't worry about it and I would keep making the same one. So I'm very curious to see how this turns out by using that juicer. Oh my gosh, I love the juicer. It is just going to change my world, I think. I now am obsessed with going out and collecting some more fruit and apples and all sorts of things to just juice, juice, juice. Speaking of apples, this is an interesting discovery. So this is my juice right now. It's nice and full and I smell it and it smells like raspberries. Ooh, as I'm leaking on myself. Now it's interesting because we make smoothies every day and we used to put apple juice in as our liquid. I never thought anything of it, right? We do fresh pressed apple juice. You'll be seeing that coming up when apple harvesting season comes and it tastes incredible. It is super sweet, super delicious, and super bad for my blood sugars. Never ever thought about it. We were putting at least three cups in a smoothie to share and I would have terrible readings afterwards. And then after doing some reading, uh, we discovered that the berries were not so bad for you. Well, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try the juice just to see. And uh, it was awful. It was absolutely terrible. And now I know why berries are an okay fruit for me to eat because they have no sugar. <laughs> um, so it'll be interesting to see how we do with this syrup and certainly cutting back the sugar. Like I said, this amount of juice and fruit that I processed would have had 12 cups of sugar in it. Now I'm going with four cups of sugar and the basic reason for that is that was the last of my sugar. The blackberry jelly that we did in the last video, I used a cup and a half of sugar per batch. So a batch was four cups of juice in the syrup last time. And I have 12 cups of juice here. So I'm going to triple the recipe, but 
I am going to only use the four cups of sugar instead of four and a half. I'm pretty sure it'll be fine because the raspberry or the blackberry syrup was super sweet as it was. So anyways, I'm rambling. So let's get going on this and get it into the pot so that we can uh, get it bubbling away and processed. So one thing we need to do is we need to sterilize our jars in the oven. I need to set my oven at 225. And once that's up to temperature, we're going to put our jars in for 11 minutes. I know it only needs to be 10, but I always do 11 just to be on the safe side. And uh, while that's happening, we're going to get our juice here to a boil. We need to add our lemon juice and our calcium water to this. Because I'm doing a triple batch in one, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of lemon juice. And then I need 12 teaspoons of calcium water, which I didn't have enough pre-mixed. So I emptied out what was in my jar and I mixed a new one. Half cup water with half a teaspoon of the calcium that comes with the Pomona's pectin. And then I just shake her up. And then basically, cause I'm doing uh, 12 teaspoons, that's basically three tablespoons. So I'm gonna go with that cause it'll just be a lot easier than measuring out 12 tablespoons. So that is everything into our big pot. So we're gonna just give that a little bit of a stir, turn the temperature up now that our jars are in, which I should set the timer for. And then while this is heating up, we're going to stir our pectin into our four cups of sugar. Now with the blackberry syrup, I did one teaspoon of pectin per batch and it went quite solid. So I'm thinking I should go less with this. Now, what I'm planning to do is I have 12 cups in here, which is technically three batches. So I'm going to go with two teaspoons of pectin instead of three teaspoons. Fingers crossed I don't regret that, but I want something that runs out of the jar, but it's still thicker than water or juice. So fingers crossed, this is going to deliver for us. Hopefully we'll have some leftover that we can do a little tester with before the end of this video. So I'm going to now stir two teaspoons of pectin into our sugar, make sure it's nice and mixed in. And then we wait because we can't add that sugar to the juice mixture until the juice is at a vigorous boil. So we will wait until then. So as I'm slowly uh, stirring this in here and waiting, one thing that I do want to mention that I really, really like about the Pomona's pectin is the fact that you can double or triple or half. You can make the batch whatever size you want and you just adjust the ingredients accordingly. That's something that all other pectins say not to double, not to whatever, do one recipe at a time. And sometimes when you're working in big batches and you got a big water bath canner and you wanna just get it filled, it's a lot nicer to do what I'm doing here where I'm gonna get probably seven or eight jars in total right in the one batch, which I think is wonderful rather than having to go through the process three times. Well, we've got our raspberry syrup, hopefully, uh, in the water bath canner. It needs to boil in the canner for 10 minutes, then we'll turn it off and let it cool for a few minutes in there before we take them out. I ended up with one 250 mil, it's quite warm right now, one 250 mil that I kept out because we want to try this in this video. So we will figure out something to use this for tonight. I'm thinking it'll probably be a soda stream because that's one of the more popular ways that we use our raspberry syrup is we just put a couple tablespoons in the bottom of a glass and fill it with soda water and mm, it's wonderful and refreshing with some ice cubes. So probably that's what we're going to try in a few hours once this cools off. I've got it all over my hands. I just cleaned out the pot and it's really, really good. It's interesting because there's quite a bit of lemon flavor because of all the lemon juice in there. I do wonder if I could have maybe put less lemon juice as well, but it does have a very, very interesting tangy taste. So I think it's gonna be really, really wonderful in our drinks. Well guys, we are already well into filming the final video for the Every Bit Counts Challenge for 2024, but I want to do a wrap up for this video. So we're doing it now so I can edit. This was a I'm gonna say it, this was a productive three days for me. We got our last batch of August stew all finished up, 18 jars. I believe that makes 56 so far, plus the 12 that I had left over from last year. So I'm happy with that. Pleased to have what I require done for the season. And that raspberry syrup, tested it out on Dutch Baby Pancakes again this morning. 
and it was perfect. It was exactly what I was after, just runny enough, but with a thick enough texture that it kind of mounded. It was perfect. I think I'm gonna go with it again. I probably will still go back for some more blackberries, but we'll see. So all in all, I'm not gonna give you the tally in this video because the final is coming next video with all of the numbers and everything else. So I will say I am pleased with how it is going, how the progress is. Could I have been more productive? Yes, but the lack of tomatoes has really hindered moving forward on a lot of the things I would normally can. So a lot has just ended up in the freezer for now, but that still counts and it is still there for future use when my tomatoes finally decide to be ready. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the final coming up on Monday and we'll see how we progress into September.